There was a time in Australian Speedway when attendance figures were on par with many of today's high-profile sports. It was the decade of the 60s when speed car racing was one of the biggest attractions in the minds of the general public. Crowds upward of 30,000 people were commonplace on big nights and speed car racing's huge following was well supported by the mainstream media. Indeed, speed car racing commanded plenty of newspaper ink in major capital city newspapers right across the nation. The sport of speedway was booming and speed car racing was the catalyst. Well, speed car racing throughout Australia in the 60s was absolutely booming. And venues like the Sydney Showground in particular were massive crowds, big crowds also at the Brisbane Exhibition Ground. The sport was going through a golden era. This was an era featuring great drivers, all incredibly brave men with personality and a flair for showmanship. The drivers were tough men who lived life to the fullest and very much in the fast lane despite the obvious dangers of open cockpit speed car racing. The inner city arenas with their magnificent facilities provided a perfect backdrop for speed car racing's popularity to reach unprecedented levels of success. It was great sporting theatre speed car racing, but it was also very dangerous, open cockpit speed car racing. It was almost like watching a tightrope walker in a circus without a catch net. Every capital city venue boasted names that were legitimate superstars, and one of the strongest speed car centres in Australia, the Brisbane Exhibition Ground, became known as the Offenhauser capital of Australia. Some of the men who were the pioneers of the Offenhauser dominance in Australian speed car racing are now recognised as genuine legends of the sport. Well, Brisbane became the Offie capital of Australia, largely through the deeds of Blair Shepherd, who brought in a number of cars, and there were a number of Offies there. Shepherd, Morgan, Bob Morgan, Ron Wanless, Gus McClure, Barry Valentina, Bill Good, just to name some of them, all drove Offenhauses. It was a tremendous spectacle. A legitimate national championship trail modelled along the lines of the United States Auto Club's American Speed Car Championship lifted Australian speed car racing to even greater heights. Well, Australian speed car racing took a lot of its ideas from the United States Auto Club, and one of those was to hold a national championship series across Australia. And this proved immensely popular, known as the WD and HO Wills Craven Fielder National Speed Car Drivers Championship. These were great years for speed car racing, while Americans such as Bob Tattersall, Leroy Warriner, Jimmy Davis, Sherman Cleveland, Don Meacham, Billy Mina, Merle Bettenhausen, Jimmy McGuire and Jimmy Kirk were the vital ingredients to ensure the boom continued. The Australians matched it with their American rivals and showed that on their home tracks they were extremely difficult to beat. Well many of the Australian drivers were running Offenhauser equipment in the latter part of the 60s and they could match it with the Americans and beat them and this really attracted the interest of the media and particularly when the time came around for the World Speed Car Championship to be run. In Sydney, for example, four-page supplements in the daily newspapers. This was a great time for Australian speed car racing. For those who were there to see it, the days of the incredible speed car era will always be remembered. It's fair to say we'll never see an era quite like it again. What occurred during the 60s was truly unique in Australian speedway history. Speed car drivers were folk heroes, men who enjoyed film star-like status. Well, these were days we will never forget. I feel personally so privileged to have seen it, and so many other thousands of people. It was an era in Australian speedway history we will never see again, but we are so thankful we were there to see it unfold.